Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Estonia once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. And for this one, we're going to introduce another brewery who have never been on the channel before. And these guys are really quite small actually, so it's always cool to introduce you guys to breweries like this. For this one then, we are going to head to Tartu in the southeast of the country and we're having a look at a beer from a gypsy brewery this time. So this will be my first review from Pump Brewery and this particular beer is called the Kute. It comes in at 6.6% ABV and they're describing this one as an extra special pills but I guess stylistically we should describe this one as an imperial pilsner. So as you know if you've been watching the channel recently I am going through a little bit of a lager phase but this is one that was recommended to me by the guys at the Gambrus number no. one Ullapod in, um, in Tartu and I really recommend you check out that beer shop actually. They've got a great selection of different Estonian beers in there as well as other kind of various foreign things so um, yeah really really curious to see how this one turns out this was recommended to me straight by Tarmo who is a really well respected beer guru in Estonia and there's also another um, shop from that ga that he owns as well over in um, in Pernu as well Gambrinus number two so wherever you are in Estonia you have got a good selection of beer shops and also a really good selection of breweries as well so um, yeah very very curious to see how this one turns out and hopefully it is another very interesting Estonian beer but as I've told you the Estonian beer scene is thriving people over there were telling me that as of 2020 there's about 50 or 60 um, craft breweries over there which is pretty impressive when you consider it is a country of only 1.3 million people but a great place very very nice people and I highly recommend that you go and visit there if you get the chance there's some really nice places to see so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then very curious to see how this beer turns out as I said so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Pump Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Estonian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to over the next little while. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Pump Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So Pump Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are a gypsy brewery based in the Tartu area and the company was founded back in 2017 by Tanel Taber and Anton Messi. So Anton comes from a background in IT while Tanel was working in a home brewing store for quite a long time and he'd been home brewing for a good number of years before they met. But apparently Anton had been introduced to home brewing by his friend Sten Anderson, who is the main man behind Anton. Anderson Prolicoda or Anderson Craft Beer and um, you will see those guys on the channel a little bit later on. Um, but apparently um, Anton met Tannel while pursuing this hobby, you know, he worked in the home brewing store where he was buying the stuff. Um, but the two got on very, very well and so they decided that they were going to pull their resources together and start a company and brew professionally together. So they brewed their first beers at uh, Yuhu Saprudicoda, which is in Tabiveri, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, kind of to the northwest-ish of Tartu and the first beer that they released was a triple Mybox so it was uh, there was two possible beers that I saw in Untapped that that could have been they've got two very very strong um, Mybox beers one that was 10.5% and the other that was 11.5% uh, but um, yeah the idea behind the name Pump is apparently that they wanted to be pumping out lots of different beers that were creative and kind of hybrid styles if you like so a lot of the beers that were listed there in Untapped were like Sours and Mybox there was Paleo and stuff like this. There was quite a few different things that were uh, listed there. But a bit more recently, 
Um, Anton has become a co-owner at the Anderson Brewery and then Tannel has, sp has split off from the pump brand and apparently is inactive for the moment but they might revive it later from what I understand. Um, a big thank you to Anton as well because Anton was messaging me through Facebook. I contacted them over Facebook and asked them to give me some information on the brewery because there wasn't a lot available about these guys at all and I'm finding that with a few of the Estonian uh, breweries actually. I'm having to talk to them on Facebook and uh, get the information on the brewery because it's a bit difficult to find uh, different things on them. But um, yeah, that was all the information I was really able to find about uh, Pump Brewery. So thank you to Anton for talking to me and giving me that. Uh, but as of October 2020, when I'm filming this review for these uh, for you, these guys have produced around 20 different beers. But apparently the last one they produced was, um, the last bottlings were in late May, from what I understand. So um, yeah, this one uh, is one of the last beers that you might see from Pump Brewery for a while but fingers crossed they can produce a few more uh, beers at some point soon. It would be cool for them to keep this brand going because from what Tarmo in, um, in Gambrin has told me he, he really quite liked what these guys were doing. So um, yeah that's all I can really tell you for the moment about, uh, about Pump Brewery as I said. If you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah let's have a little look at the artwork on this beer then and see how we get on. So as you can see it's got um basically like a candy cane oil rig on it or something. Um, I looked up what kuta actually means in uh, Estonian. Apparently it means like heating. So I'm not sure if it's um, you know drilling for beer or something or the beer's supposed to give you heat. I'm not sure exactly what the, the idea behind the artwork on this one is but um, it is pretty nice and it is quite eye-catching. It says on the side here that this beer is uh, hopped with Aurora, which is a hop from Slovenia that's quite well known for its um, spicy characters. It's derived from, I think, Northern Brewer, if I'm remembering correctly. But um, yeah, quite a spicy um, hop, this one, if you like. The, Esto the, the Slovenian hops, incidentally, are um, really, really quite nice. You've seen me review a number of Slovenian beers on the channel, thanks to my good friend Davor. And, um, you know, the one that you really want to check out if you're interested in Slovenian hops, they're not so well known, but check out Green Gold Brewing there. They produce their own Aurora and various other hops as well. But, um, yeah, plain black bottle cap on this one. And, uh, yeah, this one should be pretty nice. But, um, yeah, pretty cool, actually. Um, I think it's saying here in the Tartu Wald, yeah, the Tartu Forest. Um, so, yeah, cool. Let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. Very, very curious to see what this has in store for us. The Kute 6.6% Imperial Pilsner. And I was just, I was wondering if that was going to go crazy because there was quite a little bit of sediment at the bottom of this one, but it seems to be okay. So let's get this guy out and into the glass then. Very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. But yeah, just to let you see, there is the pump brewery symbol just on the side of the bottle there. I forgot to put that in a little bit earlier on. But um, yeah, as you can see and as you would kind of expect from an Imperial Pills, this one has poured um, it's got a good little bit of haze to it actually and that's probably little bits of the sediment that have just kind of come out into the glass. I think I kind of stirred it up a little bit when I was moving the beer around. But as you can see, um, this beer has poured a lovely kind of rich amber colour actually. It doesn't look too far off the colour of some West Coast IPAs to be honest with you. But you usually expect that with an Imperial Pils. It's got a bit more malt in it. It usually has a little bit more kind of caramelly and biscuity character and the colour is therefore a little bit darker. But um, yeah, as you can see with this one, it poured with about a half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of creamy coloured head. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the um, the bottom of that head. But you know, overall, it does look uh, pretty nice actually. I like how this one, um, I do like how this one goes together. Um, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. So um, yeah, 6.6%. Um, Imperial Pilsner. Let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Very curious about this beer. Oh yeah, it does smell quite nice. I would say that for a Pilsner it actually comes across as pretty 
um, pretty brady, to be honest with you. Um, as you know, I've told you on the channel before, and I've reviewed Pilsner Urquell, um, the whole the Pilsner style originated in Pilsen um, in Bohemia, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. There were ethnic Germans living there, of course. Um, and it was developed by a German brewer who apparently was not a very, very nice man, to be honest, uh, from what I've read of him. Um, but yeah, it's now, Pilsen, of course, is now in what we call the Czech Republic, or Czechia as, as it is now, but most I think most Czechs still call it Czech Republic. Um, but um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is quite interesting. So for me, this comes across as a very bready uh, Pilsner, to be honest with you. It's got a nice big kind of white bready base to it. Going by the aroma, I think it's German malt that's in here. There's just something distinctive about um, about that malt base. I would have thought with it being an imperial Pilsner and going by the colour of it, I would have thought that it would have had a little bit more kind of biscuity and caramelly qualities to it, but it's just kind of normal for um, for a Pilsner, to be honest with you, it has the, the amount that you'd expect. So yeah, quite a nice kind of smooth white bready base to the beer. You can smell a little bit of that kind of crisp Pilsner malt in there, but as I say, this beer really leans towards the kind of bready end of the spectrum for me. Um, you get a little bit, um, I don't get so much in the way sweet caramel out of this one, but I do get quite a lot of a McVitie's digestive kind of biscuity sort of thing out of this one. So cookies, I'm not sure, I can't remember in Estonia if you can get McVitie's digestive biscuits, but you um, you certainly, it, it's kind of got a little bit of that kind of cookie type vibe to it, this one. You do get a wee bit of that sweetness out of the um, middle of the palate there, but as I say, a very bready and smooth leaning um, leaning Pilsner beer this one in my mind so um, yeah I really like how this um, how this goes together lovely kind of yeah lovely blend in the malt base here I have to say so thumbs up to Pump Brewery for that actually very, it comes across very very German to be honest with you almost a little bit Hellas like to be honest and yeah it's interesting but as I've told you before the Czech beers are the ones that are known for being really kind of smooth and uh, Brady, so maybe it's better to say that this beer comes across as really Czech and authentic in that way. Um, so yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, um, you do get a nice little bit of a, a quite bright earthiness, which is kind of what you'd expect in this one. You can pick out a little bit more of that nice kind of floral, spicy character that you would expect of Aurora. Aurora does have quite a distinctive bright spiciness to it. There's a wee touch of a herbal quality to this one, a little bit of a lighter grassiness as well, I would say. Um, but yeah, on the green side of the hops, um, this one is pretty much what you would expect. On the fruity side of things, it's quite interesting as well. For me, it's a little bit kind of peary, um, mainly mainly peary to be honest with you. I always find that Pilsners have a little bit of a kind of peary, apple -y kind of thing going on. So you do get a wee bit of that typical peary, apple -y ester out of this one. Um, there's a wee touch of a gooseberry maybe, and you do get a little bit of that brighter, almost lemony, grassy quality. Um, coming out of the, um, you know, coming out of this one. So yeah, it's quite, um, it's quite an interesting aroma, I have to say. Um, I like how this, um, I do like how this goes together. It does smell really quite Czech, this beer. The more that I smell of it, the more it reminds me of some of the, the kind of more bready Czech lager beers, actually. I always enjoyed those, or I did enjoy those when I was in Czech Republic. What was that, about two and a bit years ago now? I need to get back there and get some more Czech beers to review for you here on the channel because those were um, pretty damn nice, actually. So, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of that before you get stuck before you get stuck into it. But, um, yeah, I think this one comes across uh, really quite nicely. So take a bit of time and enjoy that aroma. But we're going to taste this beer now. This one smells like a really big, bready, and slightly more boozy um, Czech take on the, the Pilsen style, like a Czech Pilsen, I guess we could say. So yeah, let's have a little look at this one and see how we go. This is the Kuta, a 6.6% Imperial Pilsner, extra special pills, as they're calling it, from Pump Brewery, a gypsy brewery based in the Tartu area in the southeast of Estonia. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skoll, Tervi 6. Oh yeah, that is quite nice actually. The carbonation is a little bit active, but then it's a bottle conditioned beer, you know. I think it has been in the bottle for um, for a little bit, but um, you know it's um, 
it's still um, it's still in good condition, I would say. Yeah, this one is really nice actually, it is kind of, it's if you pay attention to the aroma in this one, it is kind of what you would expect from the aroma. So yeah, this is a lovely big kind of bready, um, sort of Czech style pils, uh, Pilsen beer, this one. That's how I would relate, that's what I would relate this one to, 100%. The breadiness that you get out of this beer, I think is very nice, and the hops, the Slovenian hops, I think. Um, you know, um, com uh, complement it really well. The famous hop that, of course, you would really think of when it comes to the Czech Republic would would be the Sats or Jatits, as they call it. Uh, but you have got other hop varieties there. Um, I came across the Kazbak recently, um, and that's quite an interesting one. A slightly stronger version of Sats. Um, but um, yeah, the um, profile of this beer is really nice. I think the kind of big bready Czech malt base and the, the very bright Slovenian hops complement each other very well. So thumbs up to uh, to Pump Brewery for this one. This is a brewery that I would definitely keep an eye on if they were doing more of these kind of Czech and German style beers. Like I said, the first ones that they released were like, uh, were big Mybox apparently. So yeah, it would be interesting to try some of those, but like I say, the brewery's not really active at the moment apparently. But um, yeah, this beer I think comes across very, very nicely. Um, yeah, let's break down the flavour then. I mean, straight away with this beer, you get a nice, uh, you do get that nice kind of smooth, um, white bready malt base that just blankets the middle of your tongue. You can feel that when you go onto the back third of your tongue, the breadiness does get slightly kind of thicker, which is really quite interesting. A nice big kind of bready base to the beer, which is great. Yeah, that breadiness is is really nice. It's, it's the, the Czech beers are always, as I say, really smooth and very bready. You really get a lot of that character in this one. But yeah, if you go into that back third of the tongue, you can feel the nice white bready character just kind of thickening up a little bit. It almost has a wee bit of a bread crusty thing, and as you reach the very back of the palate, it's got a little bit of a. Um, it does have a little bit of a kind of graininess to it as well, but as you move a little bit further forward and go into the middle third of your tongue, you've got a nice kind of smooth white bready thing underneath. Um, you do have a little bit of a more um, oily um, character coming out of this one um, too in the middle of the palate. You get the nice kind of almost brown sugary notes there. So in the very centre of your palate you do have a bit of a sweet caramel there, but then just underneath that you've got a layer of a kind of biscuity, um, McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of cookie sort of thing there and that's sitting on top of the lovely um, kind of smooth breadiness that's there as well. So yeah like I say middle third of your palate the breadiness is a bit thinner on the back third of your palate it's a little bit thicker um, but yeah you've got a lovely sweet kind of biscuity quality coming out of this one. Um, so yeah this is a really really nicely done beer I have to say. Um, the malt base is, is perfect on this one. I do notice that the further you go into the aftertaste, when you reach the border between the middle third of your palate and the back third of your palate, you get a little bit more of a kind of pilsnery. Uh, you do get a little bit of that pilsner malt coming out of it. As I've told you before, I don't like trying to describe pilsner malt on the channel because it's quite, it's really just a mouthfeel thing rather than a, a flavour actually. It's got that real kind of crispness to it. So you get a little bit of that on the borderline between the middle third of your tongue and the back third of your tongue, but for the most part, malt base is very smooth and very bready actually, and I do like that about the beer. So, yeah, I like how this one, um, I really like how this goes, how this, the, the malty side of this beer goes together. So yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, Back corners of the palate, you do get a nice little touch of, um, of earthiness there. As you move further forward on the sides of the palate, you get a little bit of a... Uh, um, as you move further forward, you get a, a little bit of a uh, kind of... You do get a wee touch of a herbal quality there, but then very quickly um, it starts to become a little bit more of a kind of bright floral note, and it's just got a little touch of spiciness as you reach the front corners of the palate, so that's quite nice. As you move around the kind of front 
uh, the front curve of your tongue it's a little bit lighter and grassy but the grassiness almost has a little bit of zestiness to it as well so the green side of the hops uh, in this beer for me are really quite interesting I like how um, everything goes together in this beer in that sense um, so yeah this one it, it's got, again got everything you want so yeah earthy a little bit herbal a little bit more uh, aromatic a wee touch spicy on the front corners of the palate and round the front curve of the tongue a bit more grassy but quite lighter and uh, a little bit lighter and more zesty Um, so yeah, that one is, um, that is quite nice, um, yeah, it's the, the hoppy side of this beer, it's, it's starting to grow on me, you can feel it just getting slightly more oily and wet the further you go into the aftertaste with this, but as I always say, on the front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just start to roll their way out of the beer. So for me, when you go towards the back of that um, front third of your tongue, you've got a little bit of a stronger um, kind of citrusy note to it, but as you move further forward, it gradually becomes a more kind of juicy peary type ester. Then as you reach the um, the kind of front edge of your tongue, it's got a little bit of a, there's a slight kind of gooseberry note to it, maybe a wee bit of an apple note as well. Then on the front edge of your tongue, it's got a little bit of that lemony, grassy, zesty sort of thing. So, I mean, for a kind of Pilsner style beer, it is kind of pretty much what you'd expect. I think the fruits are a bit wetter. There's maybe a little touch of an oily character in there. That's where you get these kind of slightly gooseberry notes just behind the front curve of the tongue. But yeah, it is pretty much what you'd expect in terms of fruitiness that you're getting out of this beer. A little bit of pear, a little bit of apple, wee touch of gooseberry and a wee bit of... Uh, kind of lemony grassy sort of thing so um, yeah it's quite interesting in that sense to see how this one goes together so thumbs up to um, to uh, to Pump Brewery for how this beer's turned out I really like this this is like a very um, it's, a, it's just a slightly stronger um, very bready Czech Pilsen style beer actually so I certainly like this one. I can feel I'm getting a wee bit of gas out of this. That's one of the things. It is bottle conditioned and I think it's been in the bottle a wee bit so you get, I can feel myself getting a wee bit of gas out of it but um, it is really nicely done. Bit of a shame that these guys are inactive to be honest. I do hope that they resurrect this brand at some point through um, through Anderson's Brewery. But um, yeah, I like how this one goes together so it gets a thumbs up from me for sure. But yeah. The more that you drink of this one as well, the more that you get some of the kind of sweet caramelly and biscuity notes uh, coming out of it. So yeah, I like how it goes together. Um, in terms of the um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, then that's what we should move on to now. How would we describe this one? Um, I would say that this beer. It's kind of at the top, it's at the top end of light bodied, the bottom end of mid body. it's probably more mid bodied to be honest, yeah. Kind of bottom end of mid bodied. the carbonation is very smooth in this one, the mouthfeel comes across as very clean, to be quite honest with you, it does have a sort of slickness to it, and I think that's from the kind of brown sugar side of the malt, um, but also the water that you have in this, but it has a really nice kind of smooth base actually. Um, so yeah, the... Um, the hoppy side of this beer, in terms of bitterness, I think this one's a kind of about 20-ish, 20 20, 25 IBUs at the most. I think it's fairly standard for your Pilsner. Remember, Pilsner Urquell is a little bit more hoppy, 30 IBUs, but I think this one's probably about 25-ish, 25 or uh, IBUs roughly. Um, they come out. It's got a nice varied kind of green. Uh, it's got a varied hot profile on the green side of things, which I think works very well for it. But the malt base for me, lovely and smooth, a little bit of sweetness which builds the further you go into the aftertaste. It helps the beer feel a little bit more oily, but like I say, this is a very smooth beer for me. Um, like the Czech Pilsners. Um, but then you've also got a nice little bit of a, a slightly, would we say, oily or juicy fruit coming out of this one. It's got a nice juicy, kind of oily, yeah, it is kind of juicy and oily at the same time. It's quite a slick feeling beer, this one, to be honest. I think that's probably a good descriptor for the mouthful of this one. Quite a slick, oily 
Imperial Pills for me, but that's one of the most uh, drinkable Imperial Pills that I've come across quite often. This is a difficult style to get right because some of them can come across just as very, very boozy, but I think the, the slightly more bready base that this beer has really kind of helps the the sort of brown sugars just sit there if you like so I like I do like how this one um, how this one goes together in that sense so thumbs up to uh, to pump brewery for how this beer has um, has turned out actually I like how this one goes together so um, yeah let's leave it at that for the tasting part of this video I think this is a really nice one it's a bit of a shame that these guys are not um, active anymore I would have loved to have tried a few of the other beers that these guys have done but maybe the next time I go to Estonia um, their beers are uh, are available again and I can um, have a look at some of those so um, yeah this was a really nice one to review so let's leave it at that this one was the Kuta a 6.6% Imperial Pilsner or Extra Special Pils as they're calling it coming in at 6.6% ABV for me it was quite like a big more boozy bready Czech style Pilsen beer to be honest with you it had a lot of that Czech breadiness to it which I uh, I really quite liked so um, yeah let's leave it at that so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know your favorite beers from the pump brewery um, hopefully we can return to these guys at some point soon like I said do let me know some other breweries that I should check out from the Tartu area or other Estonian breweries and let me know some other Imperial Pilsners that I should check out as well um, I think that's a style that I do need to um, explore a little bit more but this one for me really nice very smooth uh, nice bright uh, Slovenian hops in this one and it just uh, it just goes together very nicely so if you do get the chance to try some of their beers and they are fresh then uh, go for it because I think you will be quite impressed with them but um, yeah this one was the Kuta 6.6% Imperial Pilsner from Pump Brewery a gypsy brewery based in the Tartu area in southeastern Estonia thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon Slanjut, Skull, Tervisex make sure you check out this beer if you get the chance cheers <laughs>